Hey, welcome back to our video fly tying series. I'm Steve Worley, owner of the Worley Bugger Fly Company. And today, I'm gonna show you how to tie the pattern we call Grape Ape. So it is July of 2023. The Yakima River here in central Washington is plumb full of water, uh, which is normal for this time of year. Uh, and as we see the, the river flows come up, you know, for irrigation needs, uh, the air temperatures also come up and typically when that happens we get really warm days uh, our aquatic hatches tend to be fairly sparse on the river so the trout tend to uh, start turning their attentions more towards terrestrial food forms stuff that's you know living in along the banks of the river or along other types of structures uh, where terrestrials like grasshoppers, ants, beetles, and all the other funky little critters, you know, get blown into the water the fish are eating. So we came up with uh, the grape ape here to kind of mimic uh, a wide variety of different food forms, uh, which is basically what, you know, our attractor flies over the years have been like, you know, Madam X, Royal Coachman, Royal Trude, the Renegade, all those are what we consider attractor flies. Um, so the grape ape falls into that same category. And it's just in recent years, you know, that, that purple has become a really popular color, you know, to tie into our, uh, into our trout patterns. It's always been a really well-known steelhead color. And if you have uh, studied the color spectrum, uh, we, we know that uh, fish always see the color black under every light condition. Well, purple is the next color right next to, uh, to black on that color spectrum. So we know under every light condition, fish are probably going to see purple too. Um, you know, and thanks, thanks to Trey Combs, uh, you know, advanced steelheading book. Um, he'd done a lot of, uh, a lot of research into, uh, the cones in, in fish's eyes and how they shift under different light conditions and what they see as far as color goes. So with that, I'm going to leave you and we're going to get to tying the gray bay here. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's get started here with the gray ape. Some of you <clears throat> that are old enough may remember the Saturday morning cartoon. That's how it got its name back in the day. We're gonna start with a 3X long dry fly hook. And today I'm using the A-Rex 530. There's really only one other company, Mustad, does a uh, 3X long dry fly hook. And this, as you can see, is a it's a natural band hook, and it's black. It's nice, but e e either or, it doesn't matter. Just so long as it's 3X long. A lot of companies, you know, just because they don't build a 3X long dry fly hook. They use a streamer or a nymph hook, you know, to build their big chubbies and their big foam flies just because it's they're just not available. There are only two companies I know that do a 3X long dry fly hook besides the hopper hooks and stuff like that. But these are these are light wire. I'm going to run a thread brace of purple. I'm using UTC 70. That's one of my favorite threads just because it lays flat it's nice we're building big big flies too so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take some prison dubbing in red we like red you know it's a uh, it's a great attractor color uh, it's it creates a hot spot you know and we bit we've been building these hot spots on flies for i mean since the axe stone was created more than 30 years ago so don't think that the hot spot just uh just arrived here with euro nymphing <clears throat> so you're going to want to form you know a dubbing on your little dubbing rope on your on your thread here and then you're just going to wind it 
right on the band of the hook there, just creating a nice little dubbing ball. That'll create our, our hot spot. Add our rubber legs in the back here. So you just take it, I just lay them on the top, try to splay them out evenly so they lay right. And then just make several thread wraps there, just binding them down to the shank. Then you can just pull, see how I'm pulling that really tight, and then you just get down in there, that'll that'll trim it off real close. Now even if, the, you can leave these a little bit long, we can finish them at the end. Because they'll, they'll have a tendency to kind of move around a little bit. I guess move around is not the, the thing, but they'll, they'll go in different directions when we start winding our body. So if you leave them a little bit long, then we can form them at the end. I'm going to take a piece of flat 2 millimeter foam in purple and cut it about this width. And then just take it and lay it up about three quarters of the way on top of the shank and bind that down. Run the thread forward and then run it back all the way to the dubbing ball there. And next we'll add a brown saddle hackle feather and just take and strip the quills off there and expose that stem. And then lay that stem on top of the shank and then you can bind that down real good. And then run your thread forward. And I just always half hitch, just so it kind of keeps the thread in place where you want it to be so it's not moving around on you. So make sure that hackle's out of the way and your rubber legs are in place there where you want them. And we'll start winding the body. Pull fairly tight on the on the foam as you're winding it forward. It'll just kind of fill in the, the gap there in between the, the wraps. You get to your thread and then you're gonna wanna tie it off. And I just wrap a few times on one side, wrap a few on the other, pull tight. You can see how tight I'm pulling. And then again too, just pull on that foam, get your scissors as close to the shank as you can and that'll trim it off real close just so you don't have a lot of unnecessary bulk there on your fly. And then we'll just finish tying that in. Next you're gonna take your hackle you can use your, I like to use a tool, it just gives you a little bit more precision, accuracy where you want the hackle to go. <clears throat> so if you do, just connect your hackle plier and start moving it forward. And we'll want to get four wraps of hackle on the body. And again, a couple wraps behind couple wraps in front and that will secure your saddle hackle down nicely. Okay, so there's a little bit of prep work before you start tying this fly. So what you're gonna wanna do is get your 
one millimeter black, one millimeter purple, and glue them together. And after those are glued together, then you can use your punch. This is the Stonefly punch. You can use the Chernobyl punch too. And you can see it's just it's just uniform how it punches the bodies out. Just makes your fly look just makes it look better structurally, you know, and aesthetically just looks better. So if you like fishing good looking flies, just confidence and making nice flies is I mean, why spend the time if you might as well just buy them. So once you've got your foam punched, you're gonna take and you're gonna lay it up on top. And with this, this does this one doesn't go all the way back against the, the back like other flies do. This one only goes about halfway. Okay. So once you got that in place where you want it, just bind it down. I'll make a few wraps in front and then we'll just half hitch it in place. Once we build everything on top of there too, it'll it'll tend to lay down on the on the back of the body more too. Okay, so we're gonna lay in an underwing here. And that is some midge flash. You want about seven or eight strands of it, and that's in purple. I'll just take and <clears throat> cut it square, and then just lay it up on on top of the foam. Make a few wraps, tying it in nice and tight. And you can cut off, you can get your scissors in there and cut off any of that excess that's sticking out. And then lengthwise, you want this to go to the very back, basically about where the bend starts. The back end of the hot spot egg sac there. That's another good reference point. Okay, so now we're gonna tie in our wing, our first wing. And I pre-cut it off of the off the elk hide there. So you wanna clean it, of course, and then put it in your hair stacker. And stack it so all the tips are nice and neat. Pull out any of the small hairs. Make sure they're nice and even. Anything that's not, you can pull out of there. And then again, this this wing, this wing isn't going to go back. Like if you're a tiny stimulator, or, you know, a Madam X or something else, it's going to be more kind of like if you're a tiny an elk hair caddis. So it's going to be just a short elk elk wing. So pull tight each time that you pull that wing in, just run that thread through those hollow fibers. You can see how it's securing it in place. Each time just make a thread wrap somewhere different through the through the fibers and that will secure it really well. One more. Okay. And then you can get in there nice and close and chop out all that excess. It does need to be a great big thick wing. Like if you were building a steamy or something, because we're going to have 
We're going to have polypropylene wing in there too. That's going to add, give it more flotation. You know, and this is a great, you know, hopper dropper fly. You know, we do a lot of that in the summer. You know, fish are holding in shallower water riffles. So this is a great fly to use, you know, in tandem conditions, you know, with a heavy dropper tungsten, you know, it'll support all that weight. You know, and really super buoyant. Act as a as a great strike indicator. But a lot of times they come up and eat the the grape ape too. So once you got that, all those fibers trimmed out about as good as you can, then you can secure all those down, make some thread wraps in there. That'll just secure that wing even more. This is a little long out front here, so it gets in the way, you can chop it a little bit. Okay, so our next item is just a small, don't need a lot, it's just a small little chunk of polypropylene yarn in purple, okay just take and trim those ends so everything is nice and straight so it'll secure in well and then we'll just bind that in and then get a measurement you want it about three quarters of the way up that elk wing. And then just trim the fiber straight off. And then we're gonna do the same We're going to add a little piece of white in there just as a visual reference you know the river the Yakima has a lot of water in it in, in the summer and a lot of times when these things are floating through riffles they can get lost a little bit too you know and lots of glare lots of sun so again just lay that in there Secure it in place. And then again, should be a little bit shorter than your purple wing. Anything that's kind of crazy, you can trim out of there. We're gonna fill in our thorax with peacock prism dubbing. Just thin, doesn't have to be real thick amounts. I'm just gonna lay in a thin so grab your grab your body and all your wings, kind of pull it back. And then wind your start winding your dubbing forward and see it kind of helps secure everything and push everything down and then just move it forward towards the eye make sure that you haven't crowded that Okay, so once you have that tied off, you're gonna take a thin strip of white, one millimeter foam. And we use one millimeter a lot in this fly just because we don't want it too overly bulky. We're gonna lay this right up on top. And you can leave this a little bit long. It's better to tie it in long 
and then trim it to where you need it. So we'll make some thread wraps there. And this again is kind of a, it's a visual, just so you can see this fly in the big water and in the riffles. And then snip that off. And then you can just cut this off too and just cut it about the same length there. And then just sneak your thread back in underneath the thorax there right in front of the poly. This will kind of this will help push everything down too. And don't just make some thread wraps, but not really, really super tight. Take and get in real close there, and just cut that. Now we're going to add our rubber legs. So you're going to get two sets of rubber legs. And what I do is I just get them both together even, kind of form a loop with them. And then just lay them over the top. Then just pull, bring your thread over the top, just real loosely. You see me, if you watch the videos, you've seen me do this a million times. So we just say that the weight of the bob and we'll keep them in place. So then you can just cut your loops here in front. Separate your your legs, two to each side. Pull them down along the side where you want them. They should just go right in, right in along the side of the of the fly. Anything that's sticking out there kind of funky and leave them long we'll, we'll trim them at the at the very end we're almost almost completed this fly so once you got them in place where you want then you can start each thread wrap just pull a little bit tighter until you feel that they're secured and in place we'll take just a little bit more of our peacock dubbing, prison dubbing. And we'll want to just fill in this thread right there. We'll just cover it up. Just real light amount. Get it nice and tight, dubbing rope there. go in between you can even hold those legs back just make a couple of thread wraps there and that'll cover it all up and then a couple half hitches and then just be careful not to get up in there and Cut your thread, don't cut the rubber legs off. Get all this all these rubber legs everywhere. So now we can just kind of fine tune it just a little bit at a time. Just start cutting it. 
And it's just basically how you want it to look, the length. I mean, they're there just, you know, for added movement and, you know, silhouette. And then our, our tails in the back. Again, just a little bit at a time. And you can trim it as, as it needs. And once you whack it off, it ain't coming back. Okay, and then our front here too is a little, it's a little long. We don't want to trim it all the way to the eye. We want to leave a little bit in front. We do that a lot with our flies. Just so it will push in case we want to, you know, a lot of times when terrestrial bugs are on the water, they're, you know, they're twitching and moving. So this is going to help push a little bit more water if we want to move this fly. A lot of times trout will react to a moving fly, so that will help. Okay, so there she is, the grape ape in completion and ready for fishing. So another, yeah, great tandem fly, great brush fly in the riffles. Give it a try. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing.